Here's the statistical story in Saskatchewan Place. And Dave, are the coaches concerned about overtime, or is that something that's still some seven minutes away and they're worried about the third period? I think it's a little too early to be concerned about it yet. I think you get down to the two-minute mark, you start really thinking about the OT. Right now, you're thinking about just the next goal or not giving up something easy here. And here at Saskatoon's Corey Kosher moving in. Kosher dropped it in front. Backhander by Sutton hit a stick and just sails wide. And it goes over to Bob Wilkie. Wilkie of Swift Current ahead to Brian Sackett. Up on the right side. This is Tim Tisdale take it out of the play. And the puck is underneath the Saskatoon player, Snezzer. Bernie, before the game, I had a chance to talk to Lauren Fry, who's the assistant general manager of the Swift Current Broncos, and really deserves a lot of credit for helping to build this team, and along with Graham James. They've got eight midget players in the roster tonight playing, and uh, when you see a player like Kimby Daniels, who's only 16 years old, control the game like he has, I mean, Graham James has got to be very pleased that he's got a good club, but the future also looks good. Two years ago, the team was devastated by that tragic bus crash which killed four players. Swift Current has rebounded from the emotional depths of that tragedy to become the number one ranked team in all of Canada. An exciting Memorial Cup championship, 3-3 in the third period as Lambert shoots it in. Power, number 10 for Saskatoon. Third round pick of the Edmonton Oilers, trying to get it out. Now Darwin McPherson. Native of Flintflon, Manitoba, number 27 is stopped. Bauer will try to get something going here. Bauer trying to feed a pass to Dean Holine off his stick, and it comes to Trevor Sim. Sim, new sober left. He in turn tried to get it to Peter Kozowski in that field, and here goes Darwin McPherson deep in his own zone for Saskatoon. Bernie, I'm sure both coaches on the bench are probably reminding their players that late in the game, things like no high turnovers, and the fourth check to the third man high, no block shots, things like that late in the game are very, very important. Now here's a chance for Peter Soberlock setting up the shot. It's blocked by defenseman Darwin McPherson, who's playing with a bad ankle. He hasn't practiced for the last couple of days. Darwin McPherson stopped a shot earlier in the tournament, but he's out there playing a stellar game today. Moving in now, here's a chance. Christie, he's hauled down and taken out of the play. Kevin Kanoff fires it off the boards to Kennedy. Here comes Kennedy, moving up with Daniels, who's heading for the front of the net. Loose puck, and nobody there to pick it up. Wilkie keeps possession. Right in front to Daniels, and it sails wide. Another opportunity there as Kennedy goes after the puck. In front, spinning around is Kyle Reeves, number 17. Reeves sends it through the crease, and it comes out to the blue line where it's off the glass as Christie cleared it out, but brought back in. A shot by Wilkie is stopped by goaltender Mike Greenlay. 4.30 remaining in the third period. Saskatoon under a little pressure in their own zone, and Garrett gets it to center ice. It's fired right back in. Bauer in front of his own goal. The two teams at full strength. The shot in by Brian Garrett. Right to goaltender Trevor Kruger. On the left side, Brian Sackett. Sackett drops it there for Daniels. Shoots it into the Saskatoon zone. After it goes Mark McFarland. Bauer behind his own goal for the Saskatoon Blades. Four minutes remain in the third period. We're tied at three. Reaching for it is Kaminsky and just failed to maintain possession. Billy, both these teams have to be very careful if they don't get guilty of the long shift. This has been a long game, a very good pace here. And it looks like both the teams are still staying out long on their shifts, and that's something that the coach always worries about. Now here's a chance for Saskatoon's Katelnikov, and he was stopped as Kevin Kanoff knocked the puck off his stick. Outside the line, the Broncos trying to get it. Kevin Kanoff, he was stopped. Here's Ooh, and almost a two-on-one. It's a delayed offside as Sissons had the puck all tied up, putting his teammate on left wing offside at the blue line. Both coaches now have got to make sure that they keep the players on the short shift, as I mentioned earlier, and they got to make sure they don't give away that numerical advantage. It's the Blades especially, I think, against the line of Daniels and uh, Kennedy. I've got to make sure on the rush they're doing the job against this line because this line for Swift Current has been very, very effective. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, a population of 180,000. The 
city offering world-class hospitality, and they've certainly done that this week during the Memorial Cup Championship. Record crowds for the Canadian Major Junior Championship, a shot by Smart. Great scoring chance there for Jason Smart, number 20. Loose puck at the side, deflected as Smart was right in front of Cougar again. Three minutes in the third period. We're tied at three, a shot deflected off the stick, high into the crowd. Well, this has been a real good game, and the teams have played at high intensity. We've got to make sure now the emotions don't run too high, because they've done a very good job today. Played very disciplined hockey, both teams. And you don't want to go with a situation where somebody takes a bad penalty and hurts their team, so they've got to make sure they have lots of poise now. The referee, Loris, has been around. He's an experienced referee. I'm sure he'll make sure the players get a break here. Numerous NHL scouts and general managers and player agents here all week at the Memorial Cup Championships and also the NHL officials. John D'Amico of the NHL staff is here scouting the officials and of course it's a big opportunity for them as well in terms of their hockey future. There's been some good officiating here this week. This shift right here is a very important one because you've got Knox, Daniels and Kennedy out. And this is the line who's had a lot of good success today. It'll be an important shift for Saskatoon here with only two and a half minutes left in the period to do a job to get this line on this shift. Here comes Christie as he took the pass from Darren McPherson. Gets it up to Garretts. Garretts is taken out of the play nicely by Bob Wilkie. In behind the net is Christie trying to jam it in front. Here's a chance of shot by Garretts. And that hits someone in front and sails into the corner. It's Kruger behind his own goal. Slaps it ahead to Blake Knox. Knox now gets it ahead. Here's Daniels moving in. Daniels to Kennedy. A shot. Oh, and Greenlay robs him. That's been the story of this game. Mike Greenlay and Trevor Kruger, the goaltending, has been exceptional. Well, that's a big save. Down. That's a big save by Greenlay. Once again, off the rush. This line creates a lot. And Sheldon Kennedy's way behind the play, but he skates hard off the puck to join the attack. Kirby, uh, Daniels just feeds it off to him, and it's a great play by Kennedy and a great save by Greenlight. Look at him, he's right in here. It's the goalie and the shooter. It's excellent job by Greenlight, just holding his ground. He went down early, but he had the net well protected. Again, that line for Swift Current, that's an excellent line. Well, in the history of the Memorial Cup, Ontario teams have won it 40 times. Manitoba teams 12, Alberta, Quebec, and Saskatchewan 5. And a Saskatchewan team will win it for the sixth time with Saskatoon and Swift Current battling here. Less than two minutes to go. In regulation time, we're tied at three. This is number 13 for Swift Current. Tim Tisdale back. A shot by Lambert. Loose puck in front. And goaltender Greenlay makes the save. And back come the blade. Kosher. He's moving in with Katelnikov trying to get in front of the net. Taken out of the play by defenseman Kevin Kanop. Digging after it. Here's Kosher behind the net, right in front of shot. Oh, what a save by goaltender Kruger. Pretty an unbelievable save. Once again, Kosher is so strong on the puck behind the icing line. The checker can't take him off the puck. And if you watch this save, it's unbelievable. This could be the play of the game. Kosher, great job, puck protection. There's the shot. Kruger's right up on his feet, makes an unbelievable save, and Marcel just cannot believe it. This is, this is the toughest part about coaching, is when a goaltender does it to you. That's unbelievable. What a great reaction shot of Saskatoon coach Marcel Como, and Dave, you know all about that. I'll tell you, it's, uh, that's tough to take. Coaster deserves a lot of credit for a great job behind the icing line, and you gotta give Trevor Kruger equal credit. What a save, amazing. Are we heading to overtime? One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the third period. It's a 3-3 tie. The 1989 Memorial Cup Championship, and what a game this has been. An exciting finale to Canadian Major Junior Hockey. And Ed Chenault, David Branch, Jill Corto have to be very impressed with the exhibition here this week of their teams from the respective leagues. Into the corner now goes Kruger. The final minute of regulation time. It comes to Knox. Knox cleared it to center. It's backhanded in by Brian Garrett. Now the puck. It goes ahead to Knox. 
Cox, a pass up the middle. Here's a chance now for Daniels moving in. He's taken out of the play by Sutton. Loose puck. Greenlay reaches high in the air. 37 seconds remain. Bernie, it would almost seem fitting that this game should go into overtime. The fans this week have been great. They deserve to see a little overtime. And these two teams have played excellent. This has been a great game, and I think we may see some overtime. Although now we're down to a face-off, which are always important in the last half minute of the play. The Blades traditionally have been a little bit stronger on face-offs than Swift Current. This is a very important face-off right here, Bernie. There have been some outstanding plays. The Lon Jean Wittenauer play of the game. Well, it'll probably be the overtime winner. If it goes into overtime, it's a 3-3 tie with 37 seconds remaining. A face-off in the Saskatoon zone to the right of goaltender Mike Greenlay. Number 13 for Swift Current, that's Tisdale. He underwent a spinal fusion last year. It was two months in bed. He said he just watched soaps and movies, was anxious to get back, and he's been a key member of the Swift Current Broncos this year. The puck is kept in. Here's a chance in front. Ooh, and that just sailed wide of goaltender Greenlay, who I think misplayed it somewhat. Sutton fires it off the glass up to Kosher. Kosher moving in, heading for the front of the net as Sissons looking for the pass, and it's off a stick. Sissons with 12 seconds remaining, and it's cleared down the ice, and going backboard is Ken Sutton. Five seconds remain in the third period. It's shot down the ice. We're going to overtime. 3-3. After regulation time, and Dave King, as you mentioned, what a finale it'll be. It's been record crowds, record hockey entertainment all week, and it'll be decided in overtime. I think it's just a fantastic finish. I think it's a real credit to both these teams to battle through 60 minutes to go into overtime. Both goalkeepers have played so well. It's been a game that's been, I think when the coaches look at the videotape tomorrow, they're gonna to be a little concerned about the way they played when it was 3-3 in the last five minutes. No one really was playing very defensively, but it's exciting and it's a good hockey. And I think this is gonna really sell some tickets and young kids watching hockey today, you can see that major junior hockey certainly produces some good players and it's games like this. And a look now at the summary of the hockey game up to this point and uh, boy it's been an entertaining contest here at Saskatchewan place in Saskatoon it was Kennedy opening the scoring in the opening period Kennedy from Danny Lambert and then in the second period it was Knox Blake Knox and then Saskatoon striking back it was Scott Sissons and then Katelnikov Tracy getting a big goal there and then Kosher unassisted late in the second period at 1943 and Saskatoon leading by one goal but Daniels responds in the third period from Kennedy to tie it up entertainment and this is an exciting Memorial Cup championship.